Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the new screensavers is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. The new screensavers is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send all the ingredients to cook fresh, delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this weekend. Get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. Looking for the ninth planet from the sun, the electric vehicle for the rest of us, and the game of geeks. Live from the twit brick house in beautiful downtown Petaluma. It's the new screensavers. Gentlemen, it is episode 38 for Saturday, January 13th, 2016. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. Hey, nice to see you, Robert. Good to see you. Thanks for having me back. I, I thought that would never happen after that, you know, that... That, that thing? Yeah, that thing. I mean, I mean to talk to you about the no-hole. We call that the no-cage now, is that right? It is now the, the steel cage. So the steel ca two <laughs> geeks enter, one geek sleeps. That's, that's how that works. We are going to have the best show. By the way, thanks to Ron from Purdue University, from the Animal Sciences Department, for doing our show open. He's here with a bunch of beef guys. They were just at the Cattlemen's, uh, what is it, the, the cattle, Cattlemen's Convention in San Diego. They thought they'd pop in up here because they're going to do a beef channel at Purdue. I don't know what they got. Did, some did you crazy bring plan. beef for everyone? <laughs> his his license plate, I'm told, says beef guy. <laughs> Tech nice. guy. Nice. Beef guy. Here nice. We go. Yeah. I'm liking that. We had a great conversation before uh, the show about, you know, that Japanese style oh, Kobe yes, beef or Wagyu course. beef. Of course. And I asked him, why is it that in America we can't get beef that good? These Japanese beef, they're fed beer, the cows are massaged every day. And, and he said the, the thing that's unique about this beef is they've kind of flipped the meat to fat ratio. So it's, it's really marbled with beef. It's just a, a hunk of fat with some beef marbling. <laughs> but it, it's, <laughs> it's incredible. But he says that's one of the reasons that we don't make it here in the United States. We could, but it's felt that Americans really wouldn't like that, that kind of fatty. There you go. Look at that. That's Wagyu beef. Uh, they wouldn't like that fatty kind of feeling in their mouth. I say give us a chance. You know, it just, I think give us a shot. It, it proves what I've been saying for years, which is the key to a good life is daily massages and a lot of beer. A lot of beer, right. They're happy cows. You can't deny that. Oh, man, do we have a great show. You're going to test another electric vehicle because, as you know, I bought a Tesla. Yes. And this, the, this is like the anti-Tesla. Yeah. Yes. I'm very curious about this. A lot of people said I should have got this instead. You'll tell me. Frederick Van Johnson's joining us. He was here last week. He has a review of what is many considered the hot new Micro Four Thirds camera. We are going to play a game on this show that I've wanted to do. I actually wanted to make a show out of this. Patrick Delahanty. I think Patrick kind of invented it, right? Um, and you too, Jerry. And, and Anthony. Anthony. Anthony, Anthony, Anthony Nielsen, Nielsen gets baby. credit for it. They call it the Game of Geeks. You, me, Harry McCracken's going to join us. Dick D. Bartolo's going to be our moderator. This should be a lot of fun. The first time ever we're going to play the Game of Geeks. Of course, we'll answer your questions. I guess you're going to help a guy be, build his space shuttle. Yeah, why not? Let's oh, do that. Oh, simulator. Okay. Oh, no. That's, that's simulator, the, shuttle, pretty much shuttle, the same thing. Same thing. Okay. Yeah. But as long as we're talking space, let's talk about the hot story of the <sighs> week. So there's a guy, Mike Brown. Yeah. They call him Pluto Killer. Yes. He's, he's the not guy. Not my favorite guy. He's really. the guy at Caltech who said, Pluto, it's not a planet, it's a small rock. Well, he and our next guest, Constantine Batigan, who is an assistant professor of planetary science at Caltech, believe there is a planet, another planet, out beyond Pluto. Professor Batigan joins us right now on Skype. Constantine, it's good to see you. Hey, good to see you. Thanks for having me on. You're 12 years old. How could you be a professor? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not actually 12. It's just uh, you're very you know, youthful. It's just all the preservatives I took. <laughs> you know, back, 
I'm actually 97. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Science. What did Planetary science is a yeah. young science. So there we go. I was saying before the show, boy, I would love to have a business card that says Professor of Planetary Science Caltech. That's very prestigious. Uh, but anyway, I'm so glad you could join us. Is it Batigan? Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Batigan is good. Um, so Pluto, not a planet. Not a planet. No. That's fine. I can live with that. But then to add insult to injury, it seems you have found a ninth planet that is farther out than Pluto, or at least That's right. evidence for it. What is the evidence? Look, the evidence is that if you look uh, at the most distant orbits that we have in the solar system, right, just the, uh, the furthest objects that we know of, they all sort of swing out into the same overall direction, uh, you know, and on, their, on their highly elliptical orbits. Right, so th that's uh, what you're seeing in this in this video, right? Mm -hmm. All these purple orbits are all sort of oriented in the same direction, and moreover, all of these orbits lie in sort of the same overall plane. The only way that the only reasonable explanation for this behavior is that what we're seeing is gravitational confinement due to a, a distant, uh, massive object. Now, oh, Constantine, what's the, the, the multifold test for something being a planet? I know it has to orbit the sun. It has to have sufficient mass to be able to clear debris out of its orbit. Oh, what was the rule that got Pluto kicked out of the club? <laughs> it was actually the second one you mentioned. It's clearing out its orbit. See, what we mean when we say a planet, a planet is something that is gravitationally dominant, something that completely kind of rules over its neighborhood. Pluto fails this test. Pluto's orbit is entirely a slave to the gravitational influence of Neptune. On the other hand, Planet 9, the only reason we know that it's there is through the gravitational influence that it exerts on its local planetary neighborhood. So kind of the definition of planet is built into the method that we've used to infer its existence. That, that makes a lot of sense if, right. as, as the Earth travels in its orbit. Uh, that's why we have meteors and meteorites. Mm -hmm. We're pulling stuff into uh, our atmosphere by our gravitational uh, uh, pull. That sounds to me like this new planet is actually has more mass than Pluto does. Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, you know, the, the mass of this object is 5,000 times greater than wow. that of Pluto. <laughs> right? So, so it, it feels literally zero insecurity when it's compared with Pluto. So in you know, fact, it's fast. fairly large. Uh, in this video, it looks like it's bigger than Earth, but it's, uh, but it's somewhere between Earth and Jupiter. It's a big planet. Uh, yeah, so in fact, it's about 10 times the mass of the Earth. And uh, what's interesting is uh, it's a new mass range for the solar system, but when it comes to planets around other stars, this is the most common type of planet that we find. Most other sun-like stars ah. don't host planets as small as the Earth, neither planets as massive as Jupiter. Ten Earth masses it is right in that most common range. So perhaps Planet Nine constitutes our link to the extrasolar world, if you will. Is it out in the Kuiper Belt? It's pretty far out. Uh, you know, it's it's further out than what we usually think of as the Kuiper Belt. Uh, you know, when we say the Kuiper Belt, what usually comes to mind is, is sort of the region that is actually inhabited by Pluto and and all of its friends. Um, in the most this this object uh, sort of to compare, you know, whereas Pluto sits at roughly forty times the distance between the Earth and the Sun, this object is sitting at about a thousand. So it's in the very extended, uh, extended Kuiper belt, if you will. It's in the extended scattered disk of the Kuiper belt. Wow. Uh, Constantine, uh, we, we are a tech channel here and our folk love their stats. So can you give us the stats of this ninth planet? Obviously, it has a much different orbit than we're used to from the rest of, of the planets in the solar system. But mm -hmm. to tell us, is it a rocky planet? Is it, is it a gaseous planet? We know that it's a large planet. But uh, break it down for us. For, for, the, for the geeks and the astro geeks among us, what do we okay. need to know about this, this new visitor? All right. So um, in terms of physical appearance, I think this object is closest to Uranus and Neptune. It probably, out of its 10 Earth masses, has most of its mass in, in ice and rock. So I'm, go I'm going to just speculate that eight to nine Earth masses are in, uh, in ice and rock, about one Earth mass in hydrogen, helium, 
envelope. So this is a very extensive atmosphere if you sort of compare it with something like the Earth, where the Earth's atmosphere is tiny. I mean, it's like a like a skin of an apple. Um, so it's not a gas the, giant, but it's pretty gassy. Yeah, so it's a, this is a uh, this is a dwarf gas giant, a if you will. Dwarf gas this, giant. <laughs> okay. I like it. This is new. Yeah. This is new. Yeah. Uh, in terms of its orbit, uh, and this is the exciting thing, it's got an eccentricity of 0 0.6, which means that at closest passage, it comes in at right around 250 astronomical units, so 250 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. At most distant passage, where we think it currently resides, it's about 1,000. So in fact, it's, uh, it's a little bit greater than 1,000 AU, so it's really way out there. And its orbit is also uh, substantially inclined with respect to the plane of the solar system. We think on the order of 30 degrees. So this is a very wild Interesting. object you know, when, when we compare it with the clockwork-like orbits of our own kind of solar system that we're used to. But as it turns out, it is, it is pretty normal if you compare it with the galactic planetary album. What instruments did you use to detect this? Uh, the instrument that we used is a is a giant computer cluster, uh, which <laughs> which is housed in uh, in the bottom of our building called Fram, and uh, or or CI, CI Terra, I think, is the the formal name of it. Yeah, I mean, this object, this is a uh, we would not have been able to derive the the orbit of of the planet without these large scale computational resources. That's so amazing. I, I noted that your father uh, was a uh, uh, accelerator physicist uh, at the mm -hmm. Moscow Engineering Physics Institute. Um, so you're you're come from a lineage of uh, scientists. <laughs> uh, I think that's that's pretty cool uh, that you, well, thank you that you followed yeah. kind of in your father's footsteps, although in a unique a unique part of phys uh, physics. Yeah, well, you know, they my parents never really exerted pressure on me to to do anything more than anything else and in fact I was going to be a I was going to be a musician uh until so maybe halfway through college. Oh, that so, explains yeah. why you went to UCSC. Yeah, 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 I absolutely <laughs> loved my time at UCSC. That was the that was the key. My dad yeah. was a professor there, so uh, and I uh, Oh yeah. I grew up oh, awesome. in in a uh, geodesic dome in, uh, in Kresge <laughs> College. But that's another story for another time. Mm, My dad did show. not lead me into this career, I can tell you right now. <laughs> so this is exciting. Ninth planet. Um, now, does who gets the naming rights? Can we call it Batigan? Uh, you can call it Batigan. Oh. Yeah, um, absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, as a... Realistically, you know, something as, as as epic as naming of a planet, you know, that hopefully should be left not to a couple guys in SoCal, you know, drinking coffee and, and coming <laughs> I, to. I, a I, why not? I, no, planet. <laughs> I think it should be. Planet Constantine has a nice ring to it. Oh, I'm, Constantine, I'm saying, that's, that's nice that's too. Uh, but you know, to this end, my my inbox is blowing up <laughs> with is. emails, you know, <laughs> the, of people demanding to call it David Bowie, and you know, oh, no, I'm no, starting. No, no, no. It's starting to grow on me. And well, I've seen Bowie. Or we could confuse everyone and rename it Pluto. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's another. You know, there's a, in fact a, a a play on words you can do where it's Pluto, where the toe is T O T, uh, like T W <laughs> French. T yeah. No, it's T W O, like Pluto. Oh, Pluto. 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 Whoa, Pluto. So, yeah. how will we know it's a planet? What now is the next step to kind of solidify this guess? So you know what we have published is is a is a roadmap, if you will. We've published the prediction of the orbit. The we've published all of the theoretical evidence that it's there. Uh, the the astronomical hunt for Planet Nine is now on, and in yeah. fact, we are uh, taking a part in this hunt. We are uh, going to the telescope uh, to to scan the skies for it. We hope that some of our Colleagues will join this quest and uh, and will find it. You know, it's we not estimate too far, that it's not too far to see. You know, it's actually it's fascinating. Uh, at the furthest point in its orbit, it's about twenty fourth magnitude, which me which is right at the technological kind of oh, cutting wow. edge right now. So oh, wow. we're just at a point where we can detect it if it's at at its furthest point. So this means it's going to be hard. It might take years. It might take you know we estimate it might take five years or so. But but we'll get there. It's not impossible. And I presume at its distance from the sun, it's probably pretty cold. Yeah. In fact, it's uh, the 
all of the heat that it generates, it generates from its own intrinsic uh, gravitational contraction. So it's uh, about 40 Kelvin. Oh. And that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's cold, colder than Siberia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the winter time, I, 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 I want right. I want one last geek question before before we have to send you off, and that would be uh, right. obviously there's going to be a lot of attention being play, paid to Planet Nine, but using your uh, planetary science background, how much further out could we get and still theoretically have a planet bound by the sun's gravity? Because I I got to be thinking Planet Nine's got to be on that outer edge. No, uh, it it totally isn't. Um, in fact, Planet Nine has a semi-major axis, the size of its orbit is about approximately speaking, a thousand astronomical units, the sun's gravitational influence ends at about a hundred thousand. Whoa. There's plenty of room out there. Huh. So there's room for huh. planet 10. Huh. Hey, it's yeah, there's no, ev there's no evidence for planet 10, but there's room for it, yeah. Uh, it's been so great to talk to you. Congratulations on uh, this uh, discovery. It's just fascinating. And based on well, your t-shirt, I think we should call it Planet Amagama. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, I think it'd be a great name for a planet. No? All right. Uh, yeah, I, I feel you, man. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit me with that axe, Constantine. Constantine Batigan, he is a, a professor of planetary science at Caltech, and it's really great to talk to you. Thank you for joining well, us. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Isn't that exciting? That's, it's incredible. Isn't that so that, that, cool? That would happen in my lifetime? You never think that something like that's going to happen? Science. Science. <laughs> Will they never end? Now it's time for a call for help. And we go to Mission Viejo, not so far away from uh, Constantine. Anthony is on the line with us. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Leo. How are you? I am great. How are you? Good. So you have an interesting uh, assignment for us. Go ahead. Tell us what you would like yes, to do. Yes. I am trying to build a simulator that the kids will be used as teaching, which means you'll be able to fly through the space because Ooh. there's plenty of video to acquire that is through NASA or through the different yes. uh, programs that we can just piece it together, video it together, and, and make it work. Uh, what I'm trying to do is link four TV sets together as if it's like a monitor uh, or, or a cockpit of a plane. You yeah. have the two front screens and then the two side screens. I want something to come through the left side, go out the right side, all the way through the different screens. Um, I, I've seen it where at the different stores, or you'll have 30 screens and all of a sudden it'll turn into one. And yeah. so what I'm trying to do is uh, let the kids practice. I had a two-year-old get in a car and drive off at, uh, <laughs> you know, grab the keys and get out, walk right up and start it up and drive off. Had she not seen me, she turned the key right back off. But so they're able to do this. So you're going to spoil put, these let, kids. Well, I'll put a two-year-old in a cockpit of a plane and just see what they would do. Do you have the software yet? Uh, do you know what you're going to... Are you going to use X-Plane? I have or? no clue okay. what I'm even after at this point. I just came up... Uh, I have a big screen that is in the... Uh, it's the old-school big screen that's going out, which leaves me the space right there to do it. Easy to and, do uh, three. Uh, right. Matrox actually makes a fairly inexpensive triple head... To go. To go, which is three monitors right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um or maybe it's four because you have one from the computer you put the triple head on there and do you get four you can also daisy chain them so you can okay. put like a, a triple head to go and two double head to go a dual head to goes uh, the, the multiple monitor setup is actually not that hard most computers will do that out of the box uh, you could use an sli setup i've actually got six monitors connected to mine including two connected via a usb adapter what you crazy uh, crazy but i mean it's, it's easy That's, but now the thing about this is each monitor is independent they are independent, but uh, when all operating systems from OS X to Windows to Linux will allow you to pattern the monitors so that they, they represent their positions in the real world. And as Leo said at the beginning, the real question becomes, what software are right. you going to be using to generate the content that they're going to be seeing? Because that will determine what solution will work for you. I think a lot of flight sims support this. This is something flight yes. sim guys do all the time. And uh, X-Plane is the, is the one that leaps to mind as probably being the most uh, advanced. It's x-plane.com. It's Windows, it's Mac, it's Linux. I'm sure it supports uh, multi-monitors. There's a free demo so you could download it and see. And there are a lot of planes in here, and you could see that NASA uses it, mm -hmm. which means there would be a shuttle simulator available for it. 
So um, this this is and it's fairly inexpensive. I really like X Plane. I think that they've done a, a really neat job of simulators. So I guess your job would be first to look at the various. You probably don't. You're spending your own money. I'm going to guess, Anthony, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to want something a little low cost. The, the problem. The monitors with, are going to be the most expensive part. Of well, this, he, right? you have the monitors, right? Well, Maybe? I was just going to go grab a couple uh, of the TVs. smart TVs. Yeah. And they're like a hundred. 150 bucks each. We we use that's not really that bad cheap when you're going to whatever you use it for. And they're very cheap. Yep. They and work. you know what? For that, that's probably fine, right? Mm -hmm. It's not super high res. That's one of the things people don't understand is that television has lower demands than a computer. So TVs typically are 1080p. That's 1080 lines. Then on a computer monitor that size would be kind of low grade. Right. But right. it's fine for what you I mean these are kindergartners. I mean, right, they're they're even they're literally six months old. <laughs> Your TV is crap. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 am, yeah. I am not flying this flight simulator until you get 4K. <laughs> yeah, Dad, exactly. 4K is so old. I want 5K. Come All on, right, really. What are you doing? No. Uh, Aren't you trying to teach me? You put these kids in front of stuff, and it's amazing. They grab your, uh, you know, iPhone, and he's nine months or ten months Isn't now. It amazing. Yeah. And uh, he would flip right through it. And now he's got it to where he's actually wa walking this, and talking. This is almost so. a Skinnerian experiment with these ch young minds, right? You're going to teach them to fly to fly space shuttles <laughs> at nine walk. months old. <laughs> I can only imagine what they're going to be doing when they're 16. Well, they already know how to use all the iPads. I, I would use it's the uh, channel changer. Now it's a remote. Now it's you're thinking it almost, uh, and so they're Anthony. You know, they're really smart. Uh, do you have a computer that you want to want to drive this yet? I mean, is that part already no, in your home? No, I was talking with my brother, and he was describing that the I call it an IBM, but it's a, a Microsoft uh, or Windows has the heavier wiring. Yeah, to you that probably do want to use the, Windows. Yes. The Mac. Yeah. No, I wouldn't use a Mac. First of all, it's going to cost you more, and a Windows machine is really kind of more commonly used for the kind of this multiple. I use my Mac, 5K out of the box Mac with three cinema displays. So, I mean, that's not a problem. It really comes down to the software, the software really knowing does. you, oh, you've got three, four displays. Let's make sure this has the left window. But the flight sims, that's a really good example of the software that is going to understand that. That's a very common thing to do, to have side windows and a, and a front windscreen. Um, Are you able to incorporate um, like movies into that. What you have is no. Uh, these are simulators. NASA, NASA will have a, a, a video, and they'll go out 13 billion years. Yeah, and it, and they'll take you through it. And it looks very similar to flying through space with the uh, what is that Star Trek? Okay, or yeah, okay. I, I know one more about, idea. He's talking about the the video that shows you, shows yeah. you the distance, the real time distance okay. of light to the end of the right, solar system. Right, right. I got one idea that's cheaper than that. That's going to be cheaper than that. Oh. Get an Oculus Rift. <laughs> Now they're they're going to be out for five ninety nine. I've ordered mine. I'll get it around May. We're going to build, and you can watch us do it over the next ten, twelve weeks. The ultimate VR gaming machine. But you could get by with a thousand dollar computer. Now instead of having multiple monitors, you have a heads up display that the kid can look left, right. It'll work with movies. It'll work with a huge range of stuff, and it's much cheaper, right? Isn't it? And much more immersive. Ew. Except that that computer is going to cost between fifteen hundred to a two. No, not even that. No, you can get one for a thousand. <laughs> you get a thousand dollar Oculus Ready computer now. Dell makes them, Alienware makes them, a bunch of companies. Okay, maybe you'll spend fifteen hundred. But what's he going to spend for this? Driving four displays. That's true. That's true. Right? I think this is this is much cheaper. You don't have to have four displays. You you, you you're going to get a computer anyway, um, and it solves all of that. And by the way, the, one thing we know for sure: these kids are going to grow up in a world where VR will be part of the world. By the time they're in high school, VR is going to be, I think, mainstream, right? So, you know, I, I, I sat down with the Gear VR. That's the Samsung thing. I put my Samsung Galaxy phone in it. Our 13-year-old was having a birthday party, and I said, kids, try this on. We, got, we had like a Cirque du Soleil and some stuff that they could look around. And I was thinking to myself, this is the, f this is the, f they're going to think back and say, yeah, I remember seeing that for the first time. I was in seventh grade, and I, well, little did we know that that was going to be the user interface of the future. I really think that might be a better way for you to go. The only negative on that is one kid at a time. Right. Those other kids can't see what that kid's seeing. 
I don't know if that's a big deal for you I don't, or not. I mean, it's, it's the no, same. No, you know, I, I, I'm going to do some research. I've got all kinds of worms that I've opened up. I would look, <laughs> I would look at the uh, Oculus. There will be others to compete yes. with it. The Vive from HTC, will, they're in partnership with Steam. Sony also has a, a, a... But I think Oculus is... I know it's expensive at $599, but this is the first consumer version of this. And it does look pretty good. And I think it's going to be pretty amazing. And cool. if, if, I mean, having, uh, you know, 12, uh, nine months olds vomit on you at the same time is going to be. That well, happens anyway. It's, it's just normal. Shit, More, yeah, shit business is used. It. Yeah, business as usual. No big deal. <laughs> it's normal. It's all normal. No, I think, I think really, if you're thinking about the future, this is something these kids. They're going to the, grow up the, with it. They're going to grow up with yes. it. And it may be, the only trouble is getting them to take it off. Because I think these Correct. kids are going to get in there and they're going to go, I'm not leaving. No, they won't. I, it, it takes, uh, I have to pull the iPad away from them. I love this. Well, there are a lot of ways you could do this. We've given you a lot of different uh, choices. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate it. Thanks hey, that's for having not, me on. Would you, Anthony, let us know. Send yeah. us an email or send us some video. If you do this, I'd yeah, love to yeah, see yeah. the kids and doing this. It'd be so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's uh, pretty fun. Thanks, Anthony. I Thank you for having it. me. Take care. Welcome to We're the gonna, Oasis. Oh, man. I don't know why, but I, it just hit me. VR. I, That's I, what VR is all about. I, I, I know VR is a possibility. I'm, I'm a bigger fan of AR, uh, and also VR makes me throw up. So, that's there, You know, I agree with you that AR has a lot of potential, um, but for what he's talking who, about, yes. which is an immersive experience, and by the way, the NASA movies would work in that yes, as long they as they did immersive videos, which I bet you anything NASA's going to do if they haven't done it already, right? I don't, I don't know of any. John, you're our NASA astronomy buff do they have do you know if they have immersive nasa videos I do not. they're they're working with the oculus uh, rift and the hololens that's a great use for the technology oh it just seems like it would just be a natural anyway uh you're you know the problem with being in the future is uh, you're you're a pioneer you're going to take all the arrows in your back but that's what we live for and a few to the knee <laughs> Oh, you know, I had such a thing going. I was going to be a planetary science professor, then I took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Hell will be our co-host next week. So if you've got questions for tall people, we've got a, a tall person. Tall person. He can also talk Linux. about Android. Yeah, He's the host that. of All About Android. Here's how you ask your question on the next screen savers. Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. So coming up, Padre's going to take a, a, a ride in an electric tricycle. Took a little ride, yeah. It's kind of a three-wheeler, right? It is a three-wheeler. It, uh, it's a bit more sturdy than what you might expect from a trike, but uh, yeah, it was nice. I can't wait to see. There it is. Uh, and, but first, uh, when Frederick Van Patten was here... <laughs> <laughs> you did it! See? You did it! Man, I got through the whole show last week without doing it. Frederick Van Johnson was here <laughs> last week. He had this great new camera from Panasonic that I've been dying to take a look at. We ran out of time, but fortunately he recorded this review for us. Hey, I'm Frederick Van Johnson. I'm the host of This Week in Photo at thisweekinphoto.com. I want to give you guys a quick overview of one of my favorite toys. It's the new relatively new Panasonic GX8. It's a Lumix GX8. This is a micro four thirds camera. But what's special about this camera? It's really interesting. So this is the first micro four thirds camera that actually has a 20 plus megapixel sensor in it. Most micro four thirds cameras are 16 megapixels. This one the sensor is 20 megapixels. Gives you more resolution, better low light performance, and just all around better photos. So that's the first thing I like about this. Higher resolution, bigger files, better photos. Now the second cool thing about this camera is that it actually has two image stabilization modules in it. So it will support image stabilization on the sensor within the camera. And if your lens is one of the supported lenses and Panasonic sells multiple lenses that are that have in-camera IS or image stabilization, this GX8 will use both of those sensors simultaneously, giving you much obviously much more stable images much sharper images and the ability to shoot in lower light situations where you need to use a longer shutter speed so that's critical okay so the other thing about this camera is the fact that it shoots 
4K. It records in 4K. Now, Panasonic is known for their power in the video industry, you know, especially with the cameras like the GH3 and the GH4. The GH4 was one of their first cameras to shoot 4K. Um, however, one of the main differences between the GH4 and this guy is that this guy shoots more of a consumer flavor. You have, you have a lower bit rate of your video, different color, not as professional color spaces that you can shoot in, but the video out of this thing is ridiculously impressive for all but the folks that are in Hollywood making feature films. And the last thing that I love about this camera, there's many things, but the last thing I want to talk about today is the fact that it has this articulated LCD on there. Look at that. See? So articulated LCD means I can shoot from multiple angles. I can flip it around forward if I'm shooting video of myself or I want to show my subject what the shot looks like I can flip it around and put it on the back of the camera and be like you know normal mortal cameras and shoot like that or if I want to protect the camera I'm just going to use the viewfinder I can close it up altogether and shoot like a you know one of those old film cameras just like that this is an EVF an electronic viewfinder but it's also articulated so I can pop this up if I'm going to shoot from waist level like this or bring it down and put it in place and shoot like that. So the Lumix GX8 has a lot of options for the uh, advanced amateur and professional photographer. Uh, I kind of fall kind of right in that <laughs> in that range and this camera works really well for the way that my brain works. I can capture multimedia, capture video, I can shoot raw, I can shoot 4K, all that stuff right in this little camera. All right, I give this thing two thumbs up. I'm Frederick Van Johnson from thisweekinphoto.com. List price, I think with that lens, $2,000. That's so actually not bad for a camera Given like what that, you're getting, yeah. that is a nice camera. And I'm a big fan of Micro Four Thirds because no one company owns the standard for the mm -hmm. lens mount. So everybody, a lot of companies make lenses. There's a really amazing choice of lenses. That looks like a... Frederick's making me spend money. <laughs> it looks like a really You good don't camera. need any help for that. I know. Actually, I'm very happy with my A7s, my Sonys. Uh, those are full frame. I'm going to stick with those. Uh, similar form factor and everything. But I'm always jealous of the Micro Four Thirds folks because they have so many more choices. I'm stuck with either lenses I can use with an adapter or the Sony lenses. And the Sony range is growing, but not very fast. So I'm, I'm starting to limit. upgrade my video plant in my studio in San Francisco. What are you going to use? Um, I'm looking at those Blackmagic uh, yes. Studio Minis because those are the it's ones. Micro Four Thirds. Yep. I got a huge choice of lenses. Yep. And you can get the 4K camera for 13 and the 1080p camera for about 1,000. Isn't that amazing? That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I think those Black Magics are fabulous. Next week, I'm going to review. I just ordered it. It just came out uh, on Thursday or Friday. Uh, finally, Moto, uh, Motorola is shipping its Moto 360 Ooh. Sport Edition watch, which is an Android Wear watch designed for uh, activities, activity monitoring. So I'll have that for you next week, and we'll review it. Meanwhile, you got to ride in something. So it's so funny. So... I was shopping for a car. I, when I bought the Mustang, everybody said, oh, you should have gotten Audi. That's the one with all, this, all the bells and whistles, all the technology. When I bought the Audi, everybody said, oh, no, no, no. You should have got the Tesla. That's the one with all the bells and whistles. Now that I've ordered a Tesla, everybody says I should get an Arkimoto. SRK, that's the future. You got to drive one. Tell us about it. Well, you know, we're talking about a commuter vehicle, and we've seen a lot of those. CES was packed with them, everything from scooters to skateboards. Actually, Karsten fell off of one, which was fun. Uh, ah. We didn't get that on film. Uh, but this is sort of a genre breaker because you've always had the really expensive electric vehicle that could drive on the freeway, or you've had the really inexpensive vehicle that could only drive in the city. This is a city vehicle that can also drive highway speeds. Uh, you can get this thing up to 80 miles an hour. You can get yourself 70 or 120 miles of range, depending on the battery options. It is a three-wheeler, but it's incredibly stable. This thing was actually smooth, way smoother than I expected. Let's take a look. The Arkimoto SRK. Now, the future of automotive technology is electric. From the supercar down to the commuter barge, everyone's trying to figure out a way to work electronics, smart electronics, and an electric drivetrain into their vehicle. But why is that future so unaffordable? From the Tesla supercar down to something like the Nissan Leaf, it all starts between 30 to 60 and up. But what if I said I could get you an electric vehicle that could do highway speeds, that could get you to and from work, and it only cost you about 11.9? Well, that's what we've got with the SRK. I'm speaking with Mark from Arkimoto, who's going to explain why they think the SRK is your electric vehicle. Mark, 
What is the SRK? So the SRK is an ultra-efficient three-wheeled electric motorcycle designed for daily driving. Arkimoto's mission is sustainable transportation. In order to do that, we got to have a product that people can actually afford. So what we said is we don't want to necessarily make an electric car. What we want to build is an electric vehicle that solves the same set of problems that you use a car to solve every single day, whether you're going to work, going to school, going to the grocery store, carries two people, gets up to full speed, carries some extra stuff, protects you from the elements. Very, very fun to drive. It's got a zero to 60 in seven and a half seconds, plenty of range. So your average American drivers doing 33 miles a day, our base model will go 70. And then if you're in a larger metro area like the Bay Area, you can get a longer range battery that'll go 130 miles on a charge. Oh, we've seen a division in EVs. We go down from sort of the inner city EVs that do scooters and, and you know they're not designed for highway speeds they're not really designed for highway safety and then you've got those cars that are designed for the highways but they again start at thirty thousand dollars you've hit a sweet spot this is a highway a freeway speed capable vehicle but you're starting at that lower price point how how do you do that well it's you know and that's there really there's a sort of a giant gap between the scooter bicycle motorcycle class of vehicles where you have you know, certainly very efficient, low cost, uh, but also just completely unprotected. It can fall over and so on. All, and then there are full-size cars that are 4,000 pounds of material to carry, well, on a good day, 200 pounds a person down the road. So the choice is either you have something that's just sort of uh, doesn't have the capabilities you want, or you have something where you're carrying 20 times your own body weight just in order to get a bag of groceries. And we looked at that and said, hey, what can we build that's in that gap between those two things? How can we blend the efficiency of the electric scooter, the electric motorcycle with the capabilities that you actually need as a daily driver? So one of the cool things we did with the SRK is we have actually a dual motor electric front wheel drive. It is a three wheeled vehicle, two wheels in front, one wheel in back, but each of those two front wheels is independently powered. That lets us basically do the differential in software. The battery system runs the length of the vehicle, it's what you actually sit astride, and we have both a 70 mile and 130 mile battery options. Again, zero to 60 in seven and a half seconds, which is super fun, but it also gives you that maneuverability that you want in heavy traffic. You can easily make lane changes that you want to make. You have a ton of visibility out the side, so it's, it's very easy to maneuver. Mark, why is it so difficult to design an electric vehicle? Because there are a lot of companies that have started up and failed, even big companies that have tried certain vehicles that just didn't catch on. Why is this space so competitive? Well, I, I think part of the challenge, one, is that you have an energy source that has about 1 25th of the energy density of gasoline. And so you have a, an entire industry that has been building products on one set of assumptions, now moving to an entirely different set of assumptions. And also, uh, the, the living and behavior patterns of people have changed over the 100 years that we've had the internal combustion engine. We had a, a largely rural agrarian society, now we have a very urban society. And so, the, the, both the product topology as well as just our sensibility about pending threat of global warming and uh, resource scarcity and so on, all of those are driving us in a very different direction, but I think uh, it's, it's, it's a sort of a slow to move space. Mark, thank you very much for sharing the technology with us. I, I'm sure our audience is, is going to love to check this out, an actual affordable EV that they can take everywhere. Uh, who knew? Now, if they wanted to find out more about Arkimoto, more about the SRK, more about when this might be available, because I understand you're, you're still clearing a few regulatory hurdles, when will it be available and where can they go to find out more information? We're targeting production for the end of this year. You can go to our website, Arkimoto, A-R-C-I-M-O-T-O dot com. You can put in a nominal deposit to reserve a place in our first production fleet. <laughs> Only cool people have cameras on their heads. I'm, tell I'm telling you. So the funny thing is, uh, it, so that is street legal. That is street legal. And the funny thing is, it, it, driving around in San Francisco in that, you just look like the other tourists who are yes. driving the little, basically, motorcycles with fairings. They have the same exact look, right? But I can get on the highway. That's the difference. I can cross the Golden Gate Bridge. But would you? I actually would. Uh, this, if, if you've ever ridden a motorcycle, this is actually, it feels much more comfortable and much safer yeah. than a motorcycle. It has yeah. a roll cage, I, you know, it has seat belts. So right. is it as safe as, in, you know, cocooning yourself in four tons of metal? No, 
but it also it's goes places cool. you can't get with a four-ton car. It's, so it's the regulatory hurdles that are keeping them from selling it today? Uh, sort of. I mean, anytime you put a car on the freeway, freeway yeah, and this is why so many of... vehicles are only in city, right. you have to go through all the crash right. testing and all the regulatory right. hurdles. But the technology is there. It's all working. It's They're, they're not doing anything on this that's completely out of the ordinary. So we know it works. Now they just have to get it all licensed. I think a lot of, uh, that's really what's holding back a lot of electric yeah. and autonomous stuff is, uh, this is all so new. And, and Silicon Valley moves so fast compared to government, as it should be, because mm -hmm. like, you want these to be safe before the, the government approval. Yeah. And, and 70 go. to 120 mile range, that's, that's that gets really rid of range cool. anxiety. Yeah, yeah at 250 miles on the Tesla, that, I mean, that's okay, I can get to the airport and back, but I wouldn't want to take it on a road trip. Exactly. And that they try to fix that with superchargers, and maybe that helps. Hey, coming up, I'm so excited, we're going to, this is, we've never played this before. Uh, we played it, I think, at our New Year's Eve party. We've shown it a little bit to you. We've been piloting it. I wanted to make a TV show out of it. It's the all-new Game of Geeks show. Anthony Nielsen's, uh, I'm sorry, Gam Gam is out of town, so she won't be. I came for Gam Gam. I know. So I'm a little I know, there. but that's okay because we're going to have a lot of fun. Harry McCracken will join us. And Dickie D will be our moderator, the first official Game of Geeks coming up in just a bit. Before that, though, I want to thank our sponsor for the show today, Blue Apron. Ooh. As you know, I am a foodie. I love food, uh, and I love cooking. But I have to say, cooking can sometimes be a little scary. You try to make something elaborate and different. You've got to plan it. You've got to shop for it. Then you have to cook it. It can be a little intimidating. Blue Apron is a way to make amazing, luscious, wonderful meals without any shopping because they deliver everything you need in that refrigerated Blue Apron box including all the produce from local farms, fresh meats and fish never frozen, and just the right amount too, which I love. So you never have waste or leftover, but you have everything you need to make an amazing meal. And then in it is the recipe card with pictures and step-by-step -step instructions. There's videos on the site so you could learn basic techniques. It's a cooking school in a box, but I don't want to call it a cooking school because it really is just a great way to get fresh meals you make for you and your family. They have a plan for couples. They have a plan for families with more kid-friendly ingredients. What a great way to introduce children to making your own food. Get Stop going to fast food restaurants. Start enjoying great meals you make yourself. Let's see what's on the menu uh, this week at Blue Apron. Uh, and by the way, no matter what your dietary preference, they can help you plan a menu. Steak tacos and mole verde with radishes and avocado, spicy orange chicken wings, Meyer lemon glazed catfish. You're going to learn techniques. You're going to use ingredients that you've never tried before. It really is uh, just a fantastic way to get cooking. And uh, if you uh, got the interest, we've got two free meals for you. By the way, they are about $10 a meal. It takes about 40 minutes, half an hour to 40 minutes to make that meal. Uh, it, it's incredible ingredients, delicious, about 500 to 700 calories. And if you're a vegetarian, they can do gluten-free vegetarian. They can fit your needs completely. So go to blueapron.com slash twit. Check out this week's menu and get your first two meals absolutely free. Blueapron.com slash twit. Blueapron.com slash twit. And we thank uh, Blue Apron so much for their support of the new screensavers. Blueapron.com slash twit. We thank them so much for their support of the new screensavers. Well, the moment I've been waiting for for years, literally now, has finally come. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time anywhere on any stage, it's the Game of Geeks! Ooh, ooh. Wow, that was <laughs> amazing. Harry McCracken is here, the technologizer. Great hey, to Leo. see you, Harry. Thanks Thunder for joining here. us. He came down just for this to kick our butt. He is going to oh, take every question. Me. Oh, and then we were purpose. trying to figure out, surely there's someone in the Twit crew that has some game show experience. And I went, what? Dickie D, of course. Dick D. Bartolo is here. For many years, uh, the man behind the match game, he wrote all the clues in the match game. He still plays that, of course, on his Giz Fizz right after the screensavers every Saturday afternoon. Hi, Dickie D. Hey, Leo. So we are going to play the game of geeks. It is the game for techies. We have three authorities in the studio. They didn't want to play the game, so <laughs> Leo and Padre and Harry will play instead. Okay. 
So there's going to be What are we three. playing for? Tell us what we're playing for, Johnny. Well, yeah, there's going to be three rounds. The person with the most points at the end of the three rounds yes. is crowned king. <laughs> <laughs> And where's that crown? Hey, hey, Burke spent almost 15 minutes <laughs> making that. So let's, wow. let's, you know, don't, don't poo-poo it. That is amazing. <laughs> that does not okay. look comfortable. Gosh, I hope I win. Gosh, I hope I win. Gosh, I hope I win. <laughs> so uh, there are so three the, rounds. Will you explain to us what we're doing? Because we have okay, no so, idea. Uh, three rounds. So there's one called Circle of Knowledge. And then there's going to be uh, the... Uh, password round, yep. and then it's going to be the trivia round. Okay. So okay. in Circle of Knowledge, you're going to be given a topic. Yeah. You will say what you think the answer is. If you don't answer quickly, you're out. If you give an answer and the person next wants to challenge you, they can call you wrong. Okay. If, you are, if they're wrong, then they're out, and we get down to just one person. So the, the idea okay. is to think and think fast. It's a little exactly. more complicated to understand when you explain it than when you just see it. So, are you ready? Uh, I'm ready. I am. So, except topic, for the thinking part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> topic number one is. Are we going gonna to start be, with Harry? Do we start with Harry? We're going to start with Harry. Okay. 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 The topic is the dead web. These are internet properties or companies that no longer are with us. Geo said it's Lycos. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. You lose. I guess, I'm out, right? Yeah, what was that? I don't know. Do you not know the rules? I, what is this web okay. thing you Lycos speak still of? exists. <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> so, um... Either way, he's out. So now it's down <laughs> to two, right? But you, you didn't challenge me before so, his okay, turn. Gotcha, all right. So you have to challenge me. You're right, Lycos now does still exist. So do you understand the, what we're doing? I think I do now. So he'll give you a category, and we'll come up with a ah, word in that category. Like, I remember this. You know, I, ne I never played this on the original game. No, no, game it's not games. your fault. Uh, okay, good, good. It's confusing. Right. All right, so okay. that was good. So um, should we kick him out? Yeah, I should be out. No, let's do one more. You got How many do you have? You'll have lots? Well, we have three. And do we keep cycling around? So? Until somebody, yeah, right. until somebody loses. Actually, okay. what happens with, if, if he's out, do we keep going until both? One yeah. guy has to stand. So oh, okay. 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 Right. So, you, so you two are, have to keep playing now. No, let's let, keep... we'll give Padre a free pass on that one, now that he understands what we're doing. Yeah. That would... Let's do the next that one. That was our test round. Oh, okay. It's not going to get okay. any better, folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the second challenge. category is video game consoles, current or dead. Xbox Mario. One. Lynx. Turbo Graphics. Uh, Game Boy. Sega Genesis. Nintendo Entertainment System. The original Xbox. PlayStation 4. Nintendo 64. The original PlayStation. PlayStation 3. <laughs> Super Nintendo. Uh, the Atari Lynx. Game Boy 3D. Game Boy. The Atari 2600. Wait a minute, I said the Lynx. Oh. That's all oh. right. I didn't Am challenge I you enough. 2600, okay. you're right. Uh, ColecoVision. Game Boy Color. The Atari 5200. <laughs> Uh, 3DO. Atari 2600. He, he said that he said already. That. Oh, okay, I'm out. That, uh, ah. the, okay. the Atari 7800. Uh, Sega Saturn. The Magnafox Odyssey. <laughs> I think we've actually named everyone that's I out there. I think so. No, I there think you can go away from All right, you win. Harry McCracken, ladies Woo! and gentlemen. Give us one more, though. You can't, you can't win unless you can say one more. Uh, 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 the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, no. Did we do that? Yeah, we did that. You got to do I one more. I think that's fair, the, right? The, the Super, the super right, Famicom. Won. There you go. There we go. Got it. Super what? Famicom. That was the oh, Famicom. Nintendo that was the original came, Nintendo yeah. game. Wow, that was fun. That's hard. <laughs> okay, so he wins. So, I win. How many points does he get for that, Alex? One point. Twenty points. Twenty. Twenty points. One point. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay. Now we, we're going to start. We're going to do topic three, right? Every th all three. Do playing? we go? Do we go through another one? Yes. One, more. one more. Since we one got more. the hang okay. of this. So the, here is your Should final Padre topic. start this one, maybe? Well, you go next, Leo, and then Padre. I'll start, and then Padre. Oh, okay. All right. So we're going to start with the final uh, topic in the first round, and it is Google products, current or dead. Glass. Maps. Gmail. Nexus. Translate. Google Groups. Android TV. Wave. 
Uh, Google TV. The Q. Uh, Google uh, business apps. <laughs> Challenge. <laughs> That is a product. Is there a product? Google Business Apps. Is that a product? It's Google Apps for Judge, Business. We need a John, Tanya. It's is Google that a Apps product? for Business, yes. right? Audience, what do you say? Audience, don't kick, no, no, kick no, me no, out. no, 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 kick me out. I'm gonna have no, a gin. No. I think that's. I'm gonna say that's okay because right. it is Google Apps right. for Business. That means I'm out. You are okay. AdWords. Drive. AdSense. Docs. Uh, Google Sheets. Google Plus. Uh, um, inbox. Google Photos. Wow. <laughs> uh, Picasa. Google Ooh. Moments. Ooh. Moments? Google Moments. Challenge. Isn't that a product? <laughs> Used to be. <laughs> I think that's Twitter. That's Twitter and no, Facebook. No, that, no, they have Moments now, but Google used to have a, a product called Moments. Or Cut. Yes, they do. Or Cut. Ah! Oh! Padres the winner. <laughs> 20 points for Father Robert. 20 points. What was moments? I don't remember Exactly. That. That's why it was. Right. It right. went right away so hang quickly. Out. Right now, someone at huh? Google is saying hang out. Let's There's see. a lot more, yeah. We All right. That, that concludes that game. <laughs> Let's get rid of that game. That's horrible. <laughs> that really puts, that's hard. <laughs> it is hard. It really puts your yeah. mind on uh, notice. Okay, now we're just going to do okay. Q&A, okay? This is got, right. So this, this is the is buzzers, gonna, right? Yeah. This is the buzzer game, all right? So buzz in when you know the answer. If you buzz in and you're wrong, one other person can buzz in and try to guess the right answer. Okay. So question one of ten. What part of a black hole is characterized by being the point from which light cannot escape? Father Robert. Uh, the event horizon. That is correct. Nice. It's a good movie. Okay, next question. How many lanes of traffic were in the original game of Frogger? Five. That is correct. I had to put Good the picture guess. in my head. I was like, Whoa. I know, I'm jumping. Yeah, okay. Wow. Question three. I suck. What popular sci-fi TV series created by jo Joss Whedon was canceled after it's Firefly. Whoa. As soon as he said Joss, Joss. You got it. I'll give you another four points for answering the question before I finish it. Wow. Uh, okay. Wow. Harry. Now think, think, think back to the first category because this almost goes back to it. What was Sega's last video game console for the home? The Dreamcast. That's right. Ooh, yeah, Sega Dreamcast. Yeah, I miss my Dreamcast. Whoa. That was awesome. I got thrown away. I love that console. I gave it away and crazy I regret taxi. it now. Crazy yeah, crazy. Taxi. It's crazy. It's crazy. Ever. Okay, next question. In Dungeons and Dragons, the outcome of player actions are determined by what? A 20-sided die. Uh, okay, yes. Judge, that's yeah. fine, right? Doesn't matter how many sides, yeah, right? We're going to give you that Well, one. I mean, Gygax had a 20-sided yeah, yeah, die. Yeah. Okay. That, was, that was the okay. thing. All right, this one might be a touch harder. Who designed the aliens... From the Alien movie oh, franchise. You know this. Geiger. Correct. Oh, fine. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay, we have two more. Let's yeah, just check the first well, I don't know. AJ, I don't know. Harry and Leo, you are get, being wiped up. I by know. <laughs> this is horrible. 2010 70s. Oh, terrible. All right, we have we have a couple more questions. HR guy. What here we go. What wireless technology standard? Was named after the 10th century second king of Bluetooth. Denmark. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. There'd be some geeks up here. There <laughs> are. Okay. Who killed Superman in DC Comics? 1993 story. Doomsday. Yes. Did you know? No, that? wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't know it's that. comic books. I no, live in comic books. There was no books. rush on that one. I don't know. 70s the comics. The oh, yeah. what, was the, what was the rest of the question? Oh, who? Uh, I, I, this is the part I read. Wh who killed Superman in DC Comics 1993 storyline? The death of Superman. Correct. Doomsday. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> See, buzzes, you guys are probably going to know this. Who so invited this guy? Why is Twitter only 140 characters? 
Because that was the limit of SMS messages. That is correct, Boom. It's Leo. technically not true. It's 160 characters. We won't get into why, but that's fine. Yeah, yeah. All no. right. Okay. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, actually, the actual limit is 160 characters, but it's not. Because of the time, it was a limitation of the over. Have you talked to Jack? Because he's going to bump it up to 10,000 characters. I know. Yeah. we mm. got to stop this. Oh, there's only one more question here. Guys, uh, Harry, 30, Leo, 20, Padre, 4,970. <laughs> Uh, okay, final question in the buzz in round. Apple's Lista and Macintosh user interface. Oh, wait, wait, wait. too late. This guy wait, knows. Wait, 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 wait. He gets, he gets no more question. He gets no more question. He's got to go with what he heard. Uh, Bill Atkinson. No. Oh. Oh. Now, so, so, uh, now it's just the two of us. We get to hear the whole thing, right? Now you get to hear Reset the, whole thing. the buttons here. Uh, Apple's Lista hold on, and hold on. Macintosh. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Apple's Lisa and Macintosh user interfaces were influenced by technology seen at what R&D company? Xerox. Park. <laughs> well, who said Xerox first? Because it's Xerox Park. Okay, Padre. Padre. But you didn't say park. But if they said company. Company, the company you're right. Xerox. Yeah. yeah. Not the location. All right, so now, Padre How many is... points for the last round? Could it be 100? It's about 100, I think. Okay. It's 100 Wow. Points. <laughs> the final round is one minute each for 10 points Who's each. Who's the best dancer? Oh. <laughs> okay. And then uh, well, there'll be a, a one-minute break while you get ready for the swimsuit. <laughs> All right. I look so pretty good in a thong. <laughs> the final round, this is the password round. You give the audience... Who's going to be the audience now? Oh, oh we have oh, an audience. Yeah. Okay, yeah. studio okay. audience. Okay. Okay. You have to shout the out the answers, and you can shout answers randomly until somebody gets the right answer. like charades, right? You can shout things oh. until they get the right answer, right? Okay. But yes. if you're wrong, someone will come by and hit you with a bat. No, no, oh, no, no, no. Sorry, that's the other game. All right. Okay, and remember, you can make any physical gesture, almost any physical gesture. It's a family show. You can give any verbal clue. You can't say a word that rhymes with any of the words in the mm. answer. Rhyming. You can't give the first letter of the word or say the number of syllables or any part of the word <laughs> that's in the clue. Okay. And chat room, I have to apologize. Normally, we would love you to play this, but because of the latency in the we've, chat room. We've taken the yeah. chat room away. We can't see yep. you, and you can play it at home, but the latency in the chat room means it's unfair because mm -hmm. different chatters have see it at different times. Right. Okay. And, and, and then contestants, you can pass up to five times if you don't like the card that you are being handed. How much time uh, do we, we get? Which, 60 seconds, was it? Yes. Okay. E e one minute, okay. And I guess we'll start with Harry again. And Harry, go! Uh, the interface before graphical interfaces, DOS, TRS-80, uh, typing text, no graphics, no mouse, no uh, windows, uh, Linux, uh, typing characters. I'm a little worried uh, about our audience touched, here. Um, this is going to be harder than I thought. <laughs> Pass. No, you guys don't get to pass. Oh, all right. Uh, a productivity suite. Uh, not Microsoft. Linux. Open office. Uh, oh, open office. He got it. <laughs> pass. <laughs> uh, Victorian science fiction. Um, old machinery. Steam. Steam. Got it. You got it. You can't shout suggestions. Taking stuff and putting it into codes, nobody else knows what it is. Oh. How many did he get? How many did he get? I think he got three. three. Judges, how correct. many did he get? Three. 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 So that's how many points? 4,000 points. That's three oh, okay. 300 points. I think those are worth 100 each. <laughs> so Harry, you're 60. Leo, you have got to, you got to be really I good. I can't win this. <laughs> no, go. Go, Leo. You All got right. this. Okay. Wait, so give him room, Leo, Harry, give him room. Tanya give him room. will now start with the clues. Tanya, and get the clock, and go! Okay, it was written, it's a game written in Russia where you have to bat, match blocks, pattern yes. match. Good. Uh, you, it came from a company that we were talking about. You wore it on your head. It had a camera on it. VR Oculus Rift? No, it, uh, it came from a big search Google company. Plus. Thank you. Uh, it is a phone from China that was very popular. 
Uh, the company Oppo created it. Um, he was the founder of Microsoft. Uh, this man, we were also just talking about, directed Star Wars and directed the latest Star, uh, Star, War Star Trek. Got, got it, got it. Uh, okay, if you have a computer, now this is tough. It's not 64, it's not 32, it's? 128. No, the other direction. It's, it's uh, other direction. Get, get, go, 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 he got it, got go. it. Go. They said that. Okay, remember we did this, we dumped something really cold. Okay, it. the large gaseous giant planet. That give it. He gets that, right? Yeah. He gets that. Yeah. That was good. Dang. Dang, man. How many did I get? Did I come back? Oh, he's in the lead. Yeah, but not for long. All you have to do is get one. I didn't take a nap. At least, at least, uh, at least, uh, at least we we made it that you had to play. Exactly. Otherwise, you could just gone home. Andre, you have one minute to leisurely get one right. Shut up. <laughs> he has to get two. No, I, just ties. one. Just and one. we can't oh, yeah, share one, that hat. Uh, right, one to two. I want to see Padre in that hat, actually. This is well <laughs> worth it. Okay, let's get ready and go. Okay, so you have a lot of people playing online, and they are all there. It's called a... MMORPG? Oh! Okay, so it's a, a programming language. It's, it's not C. It's not what came after it. It's Basic. called... No, it's... No, keep going. Uh, okay, uh, yes, that, there you go. Oh, he wins. Uh, I have no idea who that is. <laughs> okay, and uh, this was used a lot for downloading uh, <laughs> illegal content. You share it with... Oh, you share it with people. It was called... There we go. Okay, you shall not pass! Well, well, he was in... He was in the movie... There we go. Okay, so I'm going to drop this on the table. It's worth about $1,000. I'm going to use it to buy a pizza. It's going to go up and go down. It's digital currency. Thank you very much. All right. Um, <laughs> Not Toj. This thing. Thank you. All right. Oh, my uh, God. He is the master us. of everything in the digital world. You love this man. He runs your favorite podcast. There you go. <laughs> Why am I in there? I'm going to turn this thing. It's got a bunch of squares. There we go. Oh, man. Wow. Time's up. Whoa. I had the, those were the easy ones. <laughs> I think we know who is. We're never playing this with Robert ever again. <laughs> Harry with 60. Uh, Leah with 100. You got and more. And scorekeeper, you haven't added up Padres yet. Padres final score oh 1,500. <laughs> no, you got 170 points, Padre. Yay. And now, wait a minute. Hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. Stay here. Stay uh, here. Do we, we have, have band aids? Anoint him. Maybe back teen with the holy I'm... game of geeks. You are now which, which team geek. Which I don't. Would the holy answer? father have anything to say about this? No, no. I believe it goes this way. I don't even <laughs> know. <laughs> oh, it's falling. It's falling apart. <laughs> it smells like burnt funk. <laughs> Wait a minute. And now you know why the others did not <laughs> want to win. Does anybody have a hammer? Because this uh, parts of my counter falling. <laughs> <laughs> it's got Wait a minute. Where, where, where do we turn it on? You, you like me. You really Where do like we turn me. it on? It, it, ah, ow, it's digging into my scalp. <laughs> Okay, they probably shouldn't I'm let so... a loser put that on you. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't win. <laughs> so Harry McCracken, the technologizer, oh, great to see you. Great Come back here. again. I'm glad you did that. Someday, hopefully. Oh, yeah, we'll do it again. That was a lot of fun, and I want to thank our winner, Mr. Uh, Father Robert Balliser, and, of course, thanks to Dickie D, without whom this would not be possible. You are an excellent MC. Thank you, sir. Thanks to the creators of Game of Geeks, Anthony Nielsen, and next time, Anthony, you're fired. <laughs> no. And also, the people who created Password, Goodson Todman. Yeah, we should give them some credit. The yeah, but they didn't invent charades. It, charades no, predates no. them, right? That's All right. Hey, that was a lot of fun. I think I have a circuit board in my ear. I think you have to keep wearing that until <laughs> oh, the end of the gosh, show. That's part of the deal. It's <laughs> <laughs> painful. Now, here's our Android expert and co-host next week, Jason Howell, with a review of a guitar effects processor for Android. Watch. <laughs> Hey, how's it going?
Uh, my name is Jason Howell, and uh, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh man, that uh, that's some sick little playing there. That wasn't actually me. Uh, or unfortunately, I'm probably going to let you down with my own playing. But that is Amplitude UA, which is a, a guitar effects uh, app for Android. We don't see a whole lot of audio apps on Android because Android has historically had issues with audio processing for musicians. What's making this possible is this here. I'll go ahead and show you this. This is the iRig UA by uh, IK Multimedia. This is an audio interface designed for allowing you to play your guitar using your Android device. You can see I've got the guitar plug uh, plugged in at the very top there. Got some headphone out and a little volume knob for the headphones if you want to plug directly into there. This auxiliary input is so if you want to play along with a pre-recorded track, you can. You can ch channel it through there and it'll mix in with the playing that you're doing. And then down at the bottom, this is a standard uh, USB, uh, micro USB output. Uh, outputting to USB OTG or on the go. That's what's plugging in to the tablet here, and that's what's allowing me to play the guitar and have it be processed using Amplitude uh, UA. So the iRig UA, uh, it's pretty awesome, I, I have to say. Thankfully, what, what's happening here is all of the digital signal processing that's happening to kind of make these guitar sounds and all the effects and everything, that's happening inside this tiny little box. So we'll, we'll say it's a little hollow, um, the, the device itself, but it doesn't really need to be much more chunky than that. And really, honestly, it's all about portability anyways. So the lighter it is, the better. Um, and I found it to have pretty low noise, which is pretty, pretty important when you're playing guitar. You don't want a lot of that noise to... To kind of come out. So I've been really happy with it. Um, so let's take a look at the Amplitude UA. This is the software that kind of comes for free with the device when you get it. You can see right up here, I have kind of some amp selections. When you install this app for free, you get a few of these uh, included. There's bass, if you have a bass guitar, and you know, that kind of changes everything. Metal, which get the chugga chugga if you want. Uh, lead for... I'm not a very, very good lead player. That's why I can go over here and just go. See, now I'm kind of lifting the veil and you understand what you heard at the very beginning. I wish I could play like that, but it's just not my style. Uh, crunch, clean. You've got a few options right out of the gate, and that's going to get you started playing. You can also see here, I'll go ahead and play this because it's easier for me to do this. I can change the amp between a few different or the cab between a few different options. You can also change the type of mic that you're using um, to, to record these. Uh, basically a condenser or a dynamic mic. Everything affects the sound in different ways and allows you to kind of zero in on a sound that you like. I found the sounds to... You know, they're, they're nice sounds overall to kind of get you started, but you soon, you quickly realize that uh, you want more. And thankfully, you have the ability to get more. They have an all-in bundle that is $69.99. So that'll, that'll give you a bunch more amp and cab combinations here. This is the orange. You know, so it uh, doesn't sound too bad. You can see here what you see on the screen isn't all of the the options you can actually kind of swipe swipe to the left and right you can increase the middle decrease the bass you can shape the sound in all of these amps and cabs the way that you want you want to turn it up turn it down increase the gain so that you get a little bit more of that that distortion we'll take it down and uh one thing one thing and i'll show you this because it's pretty easy to to illustrate is when you're trying to go up and down on the interface sometimes it still wants to move it a little bit of a bummer. Hopefully they work on that user experience just a tiny little bit, but you pull down the gain and you get a little bit less of that distortion. You can get really deep with this app, and that's what I love. I actually have um, IK's Amplitude on my Mac. It's actually a part of the, the puzzle for when I was putting everyone together a few years back. Uh, it's definitely had a lot of guitar sounds from that software. So it's nice to have it in the mobile version. You can see here up at the very top, you have basically four spaces to work with. This first space, you can throw on some distortion, overdrive. They even have some wahs in here, which is kind of weird because you're doing wah with your fingers. So, you know, normally you'd be doing that with your foot. So I don't know how 
useful that is necessarily in a, from a performance perspective. But you have a lot of different ways that, you know, in like a nice compressor to kind of get the sound just a little bit louder. Um, I could go even deeper and put a flander on here. And you can, you know, play with the depth and all that kind of stuff. All of these effects can be crafted and tailored to your own preference. Of course, the, uh, the amps and, and cabs, and then kind of like a final version. I've got a delay on there right now. I could change that. You know, put on a little a little reverb and and um, dial it in entirely. If I want to save this preset, let's say I really like this, I'll go ahead and tap on presets. You get a few spots. I kind of wish you had more. You only have 15 spots, but I can tap and hold and then choose a name for that preset. And bam, I've saved it for my rocking performance, wherever that happens to be. One last thing I want to point out about the amps and cabs here is that they're all modeled after... Uh, the real thing. So you've got Ampeg for bass, you've got Fender for guitar, you've got Vox uh, for like a nice crunchy uh, sound. All of these are modeled from the real thing. So if you don't want to buy the wide assortment of actual, uh, you know, real uh, boxes to take up space in your place, you can emulate them through this. And because it's modeled, it really sounds close to the real thing. Very impressive stuff. Um, Really versatile and actually just a lot of fun to play around with. You throw on your headphones, you get lost in a world. Uh, it does come with a tuner built in, so, you know, you can activate that and it'll it'll take you to clean mode and you can kind of uh, try and tune your guitar that way. I didn't find it to be as accurate as my tuner at home, but it's nice to have it in a pinch uh, there. And then, of course, you want to wow all your friends. All you have to do is play a demo. Start. Yeah, see, uh, it elevates your style of play. All you have to do is hit a button. So, all right, so the uh, iRig UA is $99.99. Uh, and it does double as just a basic audio interface for your PC or Mac or Android 5.0 and above. Android 4.2 is required with uh, USB on the go in order to do what I'm doing right here. So $99.99 .99 has a lot of different uses for this hardware, uh, comes with the Amplitube UA, and then you have the optional upgrades inside the apps, uh, inside the app to kind of expand your horizons and open up the playing field with all of the different amps and cabs. And personally, as a guitar, a person who appreciates guitar, maybe I don't play as well as some of the demonstrations on here, but I find it a lot of fun to play with, and I highly recommend uh, iRig UA and Amplitude UA. You guys should check it out. Thank you for watching my review. Hold on just a second. I want to download a lighter app. <laughs> do you have a lighter app on your phone? I do not. I do not. How could there be in-app purchases for a virtual lighter? Uh, because that's the world that we live in. That seems strange. Do you want good fire? That's the question. Well, let me see what you have to buy. That's just no crazy. stairway. There's no. That's always a policy. No stairway. No, no. I think it, it's... Um, a free bird you're not allowed to ask for, right? Free, a free bird and stairway. And stairway. Don't do that. Don't be that guy. Hold on a sec. I know I'm, <laughs> I know I'm holding up the show. But he needs the lighter. But I need a lighter. He really needs the lighter. Oh, my God. <laughs> I must verify my payment info. It's oh a my. free freaking lighter. <laughs> it's going to be a $1,000 lighter app. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jason Howell. If I had a lighter, I'd, I'd wave it in the air. Let's just imagine we have lighters waving in the air. It's time for another call for help. And now on the line with us all the way from Perth, Australia, out there on the West Coast, Nathaniel. Hi, Nathaniel. Uh, hi, Leo. Hey, guys. How are you? I love your R2-D2. Is that functional? Uh, yeah, it is. It's... um. Autonomous, I think it's got like voice controls. I oh. can't remember. It's been around for years. We that's, don't really use that anymore. Yes. Well, I know. That's what happens with old robots. They just die and stay in the way. Start and leaking oil. Rust. <laughs> yeah. What can, we, what can we do for you, Nathaniel? 
Oh, yeah. I've recently built myself a new PC, and I built it with the intentions to both do schoolwork and play games on it. Just my school has a lot of problems with viruses, and uh, like just recently I remember we had a problem with CryptoLocker, and it, my one of my laptops in, was infected with it. So I wanted to dual boot it, but when I dual boot my Windows, one instance of Windows can still read the other instance. Yeah, so yes. if that was infected, I thought it would still infect that. Is there any way to keep it completely separate? If you had been running a firewall on your computer, you wouldn't have to worry. So when you join a network, if it's a network-aware virus, CryptoLocker, one of them. Yes, it is. It will then propagate over the network unless you turn on your firewall. Now, Windows firewall is on by default, so I'm kind of surprised you you got bit. Did you share I think it media? Was something I downloaded. Yeah. yeah, I think it was something uh, I got through. The if you, if you open up a program, there's no firewall that's going to protect yeah. you well enough. Yeah. And in fact, there's no antivirus that's yeah. going to protect you because, uh, well, antiviruses are, you know, if they if they stopped you from installing stuff, they'd and be you more effective. It anyways. Yeah. <clears throat> but you wouldn't use it. So, uh, I mean, that's one of the reasons people don't like to run as a limited user or a standard user because they can't install stuff. But that, of course, would have pre prevented it as well. Right. Because right. the the virus, the malware, has whatever permissions you have. So because you're running as an administrator, it can, you know, do all that stuff. If you're running as a limited user, you wouldn't have been able to infect yourself. You would have to log in as an administrator. It's still not perfect protection because it might ask you, oh, we want to install some software. What's your password? And you and your haste might have entered your password. Because so we just, all do that. It's just a speed bump. It's like clicking through the EULA. Everyone just says next, 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 yeah. next, and then you're infected. I mean, really, Nathaniel, the first thing is don't get infected. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're, we're done. We've solved it. Thank you. Thank you, because Nathaniel. I, I don't think there's any procedure you could take if you're not going to take care of yourself. If you're not going to practice safe computing, there's nothing really that you can do uh, that will protect you. So... Are you saying, I want to have a machine that I can infect at will, and then I oh, want no, to have no. a machine that I don't have to worry about? The question I have is, I've got, a, I've got my machine ready to go. I want to have two versions of Windows on it, one that I can play games and do whatever I want on it. Because you're more likely to get infected. To, yeah, yeah, but I also want to have one version of Win, instance of Windows on it. It allows me to bring all my school files on, and I'm not worried about infecting the other instance or the rest of my network. Here's the problem. So I want to figure out a way to not see the hard yeah. drives. Anytime you do that, you're counting on a software solution to keep bad things from happening. But they exist on the same hardware. They're going to have access to the same drives unless you, you take really, really good care to make sure you encrypt what it and it, keep each session uh, safe. Uh, that's what I was going to suggest. What if he encrypted that second drive so it would be encrypted? So if, say, say he got CryptoLocker in his game machine, and it's going to get infected, uh, could he then log in to the encrypted uh, operating system and in the process of logging in with TrueCrypt, you unencrypt it. At that point, use it safely? The problem is that CryptLocker can encrypt an encrypted drive. So oh. even if it doesn't know what it is, it can... It, it just can, encrypt it. It can just lock it up, right. Uh, so it might see this partition and, yeah. and, and, and scramble it. Yeah, and, and that's why it, I'm not really big on those kinds of software solutions. There are a couple of other ways to do this, the way that you want. Um, the easiest one, the one that would not require you to buy any hardware whatsoever, would be to use something like Amazon AWS or even something like DigitalOcean, which is a sponsor of the Twit TV network, to create yourself a virtual machine, a virtual container. You could have a full operating system, Windows as you have it right now, but it operates on Amazon's site. You only pay for it when you're using it. The nice thing about that is at the end of every session, because it's for your schoolwork, it resets. So it doesn't matter what happens to it. It doesn't matter if it gets infected. It just goes back to the good state. I like to do that anytime I'm opening something that might be risky. The, the problem, problem is that, he wants to game on that. And digi a DigitalOcean server right. is not going to be fast enough to game right. on. You're gaming over the network. But he can use the computer itself for all the gaming. So that will, that will be everything that he and trusts. And he'll have a safe partition out there. Right, on right. the web. But it will show up on his computer as if it's running locally. It, right. it looks just like Windows, but it will be running inside of a window that you can expand to full screen. It's dependent, though, on the speed of his network. It is There's dependent internet. on the speed of your network. Yeah. That is absolutely The other thing I do is I carry around with me, this is um, a Linux operating system that's on a bootable USB stick. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Tails, which is uh, just came out with 2.0. Tails is a Linux uh, uh, distribution uh, based on Debian, but with an eye towards total security. Mm. So now I don't think this is gonna help you either, but, but it's another way for people to do this. So you have your computer, your computer that you're willing to do risky things with, your gaming machine. I'd still be really careful. I'd try not to get infected if I were you, but okay. 
Then you reboot. Now that's going to kill any crypto locker process that's running in memory, rebooting. Mm -hmm. And when you reboot, you as after it shuts down, but before it boots up, you put this USB key in. Now on your system, you're running a full Linux operating system that's designed to be secure. It's not going to be great for doing your schoolwork unless you're using Google Docs or, you know, you don't have Microsoft Office, you have LibreOffice, it comes with LibreOffice. There probably is a lot of things you could do on this. The other option, I love Tails. Tails is a really cool thing, and with 2.0, they've made it even better. It's free. All you need is a USB key of eight gigabytes or higher. The other option, of course, is to get a Chromebook. Or any any inexpensive computer, and that yeah. becomes, yeah, your secondary yeah. device. Does, do you have to use Windows for your schoolwork? Uh, yeah, my whole school runs on Windows 8. And that's actually where I'm worried about. My school's the one that has all the problems. I'm not worried about my What's gaming that? machine. What's that? This is a little something something. This is an, a, a <laughs> Leva. This is from ECS. This You can get these online now for under 100 up to about 200 depending on what you want. It's entirely solid state. It uses a very small uh, SSD. It's upgradable with an M2. But the nice thing about this is it will run Windows 10. Is it like a NUC? It's like a NUC, just a very inexpensive NUC. But the How nice, much? Uh, you can get these for under $100. What? Yeah, they're very, very inexpensive. And what you can do is you can actually set this outside of the firewall that your, your network is on. So it doesn't have access to anything that's on your network, only has access to the router, and it gives you hardware. Now, the nice thing about this is because it's solid state, Resetting it is as simple as booting into a safe menu and say restore to factory de default. It takes about 45 seconds. Uh, so uh, uh, this this gives you something like running a virtual image off of one of those big providers, but it also gives you hardware, actual hardware that you can take and pull around. You can actually take this to school if you if you need to transport data. Um, I've really gotten into these uh, just because since everything is virtualized now, it's nice to have every once in a while some hardware. Uh, the chat room has given us uh, a, another choice, which I think is a really clever choice, because you don't want to buy a second computer. That's what we keep suggesting to you. Mm. Um, so this is this is uh, the chat room suggestion. I want to thank, um, I think it was Gadget, J Gadget, Gadget Hog, Hog. Yeah. Good who guy. suggested a physical switch. So this is on Amazon uh, for $27 US. He said it maybe a thousand bucks Australian. I don't think the conversion rate is that bad. But what this does is uh, it actually lets you turn off the second hard drive, uh, so that yeah. as you're working with the computer, I think that's I'm think if it's that's off, what this if is it's doing. Off, it can't get locked. It can't it can't get access to it. You, and then you would un you would switch it around. You would turn off that inf potentially infected hard drive. And boot to the turned off hard drive. That's actually a pretty. So you power solution. off the hard yeah. drive not in use. Um, they say to pr prolong hard drive life. I don't think that that's actually the, a good reason to use this. <laughs> but I do think the idea of uh, having one hard drive that's disabled while you do the potentially dangerous stuff, then disabling the potentially infected hard drive and turning on the school hard drive is a great idea. You let me just make sure though that you know Nathaniel how not to get infected, right? Oh yeah, certainly. I'm not worried about me getting infected. I'm more worried about my school network getting affected. Well, you don't have, again, as I said at the very as I said at the very beginning, the Windows firewall will keep an infection from penetrating your computer. That's the whole reason people sometimes say, "Well, my network is secured. Why should I run an individual firewall on my PC?" It's because of intranetwork mm -hmm. infection. This happened at CNN. You know, somebody brought a virus in on a USB key uh, and plugged it into a computer inside the network, right? Infected that laptop in the network, and the, and the virus spread throughout the CNN network. Even though, of course, they have great IT guys who prevented infection from the outside world, if something, as can happen in your school, gets into your school, your firewall, had they had the fire, Windows firewall and turn on, this would not have happened. In most cases, your firewall will stop this kind of uh, network infection. That's called a worm, by the way. Uh, a worm is a virus that spreads over a network. A firewall will protect you against uh, all the worms I know of. Um, now, if there's a vulnerability on Windows that can you know, somehow open you up to infection, that might be another thing. Uh, have we given you enough options, Nathan? I think uh, yeah, you've pretty I, much covered I everything. Have. I think I can um, <laughs> get it working for me. I, I love this. Uh, I'd never heard of this. This is a great idea. This, this aluminum drive slot that lets you switch uh, SATA drives. So it's just as if, you know, you had a physical switch, what well, you do, that turns off a drive and turns on another drive. 
You can have as many as four on this one, and they also make a six-switch six box for a little bit more. That's a clever idea. It is an, a, a good Thank idea. you. Uh, what was his name? Warthog? Uh, uh, Gadget 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 Hog. Gadget Hog. Thank you. And thank you, Nathaniel. Uh, what, school, where, what school do you go to? I go to Woodvale Secondary College in Perth. And what are you studying? Uh, it's not. Uh, it's high school. Yeah. So you don't get to yeah. choose a, a course no, of study quite subject, yet. So Could nice. you have one of your administrators call the yeah. tech guy and <laughs> say, hey, look, your network is just messed up. Well, we Please gotta, call this man, talk fix him. it, because I'm afraid of getting it's viruses. It's hard, though. You can imagine. You have a network yeah. with a lot of teenagers, and they're, of course, down. Oh, yeah, we've got right 700 left. kids. It's yeah. ridiculous. It's hard, but it's doable. It is possible to protect a wide-open network like right, that. Right. Uh, and I think it, you know, it's kind of incumbent on him to do that. You don't want to get crypto locker from your school. No. <laughs> You're supposed to trust them. Oh, by the way, Nathaniel, uh, I like your little quadcopter back there. Just oh, thank you. <laughs> Is that a SEMA? It looks a little bit it, like a red. It looks SEMA. like a SEMA. It uh, could be a different brand, an off-brand, but it's yeah. either a SEMA or an Extreme. I think. Yeah, I think it might be actually. Yeah. It's that's. So sure. <laughs> uh, hey, well, and one other thing: Do they have hoverboards in Australia? Because don't get one. No. All right. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Unless got, you want your house to burst into flames. There, really it go. happened in Petaluma now. It did, I know. Our accountant. Really. Our accountant. Uh, our, the company that does our CPA accounting, the, one of the partners her, gave her kid a hoverboard for Christmas. They plugged it in. It, they didn't leave the house. See, we won't, I mean, I, you know, they, let, they, they didn't go away. Of course. But at one point, a couple of days ago, it exploded. <laughs> chunks, there, there you go. I don't know if that's the one, but chunks of lithium-ion battery flew across the room. They said, we're glad we weren't in the room. And it caused thirty thousand dollars of fire oh damage. Oh my goodness! And uh, and they'd had it since Christmas, so it wasn't like they hadn't been charging it. It now I don't. I feel like we have. Uh, it's like alien. We have an alien in our house, and it could have erupted any time. Nathaniel's okay because people in Oz are way more sensible than Americans. I so. hope. Oh so. yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely are. Good man, good man. Uh, I've so, just been told which... that is the quadcopter you reviewed. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah. Okay. That's that's the SEMA. Uh, now we got to ask, which solution are you going to go with? I think I'm going to go with the physical switch. There we go. Nice. That does sound like a good way to it's do it. It's also the least expensive. Yeah, it's yeah. Nice 28 bucks, yeah. 36 Australian, something like yeah. that. That's a good deal. Hey, thank you so much. Great to talk to you, Nathaniel. Well, good. Thank you for all the advice. Always a pleasure. Take care. I'm glad Dad likes quadcopters. Yeah, I, I know. I, I love quadcopters. That's kind of cool. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I, I, wish, I wish people knew how they could get call for help because I think we just helped that man. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you how. We've got a video that explains. <laughs> Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. Oh, oh, yeah. Throw to the video. Is that what you're... Okay, thank you. I, that, that, that hint fell I'm there and lay man. there for a I am while. not a good person. You're a, you're a good man. You were helping me. We're going to answer some mailbag uh, questions in just a bit. But first, Nally Descala, Johnny Jett's wife, with a great way to sign documents remotely and while on the road. Hi, I'm Natalie Descala from O Travelissima, and today I'm going to tell you about two of my favorite apps. One is called Genius Scan, and the other is called Sign Easy. The reason I love them is they're perfect for uh, scanning and signing documents, especially when you're on the go. You know, these days somebody sends you a document and says, I need this signed or I need this scanned, I need this faxed. I mean, who uses a fax machine? With this easy app, you just open it up, scan the document, and it turns it into a PDF. Um, and then you open it up in Sign Easy, and you can import your digital signature or sign using your finger on the app itself. Both apps really make uh, signing documents easy, fast and if you download these apps i think you'll really love them uh for more great travel tips and advice follow me on instagram at at natalie Descala. she's awesome wonderful and, and like a huge star on pinterest as well and of course we know her because of johnny jet he's he's married up as they say <laughs> isn't it funny though that people will still send you uh, or fax you or or send you a document and say sign this and get it back to us force of habit that, that's uh, absolutely force of habit. it's terrible uh, and I don't know why we don't yet have a standard for digital signatures. I mean, there are lots of competing standards, but there needs to be just like everybody understands it. Oh, this is because digital signatures with PGP or something would just be so much more secure than scribble. Every once in a while, I get a digital signature and I'm looking at it going, I've never heard of this format. I don't I can't trust this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's bet sometimes maybe that's why people like signatures. Let's get the mailbag. Here it comes, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for. 
I always have a little nervousness about opening this. As long as it's not dinty more. Is that, that's, that's, ooh. Ooh, oh, not it's time dinty. for a little bubbly bubbly. Uh, wait, this was from New Year's like four years ago. <laughs> no, this was from New Year's four oh. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, don't mock the cooks. $5 a <laughs> bottle and worth every penny. We found recently, we were up in the rigging. Burke was up there uh, putting in some new lights. We found three of these plastic corks up there in the rigging. Uh, apparently fired from one of the New Year's Eve parties. And uh, I missed, I, I always aim at somebody. I missed and I hit the rigging instead. So if you've been looking for your cork, we have it. Memories. And that's for you. That's my, Oh, thank no, you. Yeah. Yes, I, I like the non-alcoholic. Yeah. I'm, and I'm here's a apparently is some origami fish. Uh, okay, I'll get hungry. What? It's, the paper anniversary. The pa paper. Oh, oh, oh paper oh, anniversary. I'm supposed to give this. Oh, yeah, that'll go over well. I give this to my wife for our first day anniversary. <laughs> Honey, it's a paper anniversary. Oh, and you, you, do you I know what she got you. you for your anniversary? What? A Tesla. <sighs> <laughs> Shutting up now. Pick a question. <laughs> All right, I got this one. Shall, shall I go first? Please. All right. <clears throat> I have this from Larry, who says... I'm looking for a smart house hub and sprinkler controller. I lost my whole bonsai collection last summer when my sprinkler controller died. Oh, very sorry, Larry. I've been training the tr training or tr yeah, I guess they call it training. Training the trees for about 20 years and losing them was a real bummer. I pur purchased the Iris Smart Hub but didn't like their product support, so I returned it. Anyway, I would like your recommendation for a smart home hub, HVAC thermostat, and sprinkler controller. I am considering Nest and Skydrop. Please let me know your recommendations. Larry from Lakewood, California. Now, Nest probably would be a bad choice. At the moment, uh, yes. Somebody uh, pushed a firmware update on uh, Nest that drained the battery and caused the Nest thermostats to stop working. Nick Bilton, our friend Nick Bilton, who writes for the New York Times, wrote an article. He's got a newborn baby. He said, <gasps> I woke up. My baby's crying. It's 4 in the morning. The house is freezing oh. fortunately he lives in uh, in la so it wasn't death defying but nevertheless his nest had died can you imagine that happening in the middle of the midwest somewhere where it's 20 Terrible. below or worse like uh you know you have a a, a second home up in the mountains right. for skiing and it, your pipes have all explode it's terrible yeah so uh i think we'll rule nest out though i guess this is a very legitimate question which is is there a home automation solution that you can trust your bonsais too? Uh, and the answer is no, not right now. Uh, we looked at a lot of home automation s systems in CES. They were very nice. They're all very nice. And because of things like the Smart Things Hub, they can talk to one another. I have not found one that fails in a good position. Yeah. Uh, because the problem is they're all going to fail. At some point, it's going to be a network error or it's going to be a physical error, and it's going to break. And if you're counting on it to be the only thing that keeps your project alive or project going, uh, there's nothing I, I really trust. Or if there are things I want to play with, but nothing that I can say, yes, that's what I'm going to use in my home. You know, we had uh, Hue lights. I love the right. Hue lights. They're controlled by, uh, uh, they have a hub, and you control it with your app. And I had Hue lights in my bedroom. And it was nice because sun would go down, and the lights would change color. They'd go off at night. They slowly ramp up to wake us up in the morning. I thought that was all well and good until the power went off right. in the house. And then when it came back on, the Hue lights came on, full bright at three in the morning and i'm going what 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 <laughs> thank goodness lisa had this the sense of mind to go and <laughs> hit the off switch but that's right they don't fail in a good way uh and that's probably nothing you'd want to trust your bond no. size to a physical timer might be a good idea but then if the power goes out you're gonna have the same problem right yeah the, the sad thing is the one solution that i thought might be there was the one he specifically mentioned not wanting which was iris it's it's from lowe's um, and it, they're putting a lot of development time. They actually understand how plumbing should work. But even then, they admitted, they're like, well, we kind of revamped our line because we weren't really happy with some of the quality control. So if the one that I was getting close to is admitting we're not ready for prime time, like you said, there's nothing I, I will trust for a mission-critical application. This, uh, home automation is still in the same really is. Is There's a lot, long way to go before it's trustworthy, reliable, and there are a lot of kind of wonderful visions that are sold. But when you get down to the nitty gritty reality, it's for geeks. Yeah. It's for people who want to play with things. I love the idea of being able to talk to my Amazon Echo and have it do things. 
Uh, and it's fun in that regard, but trustworthy? I don't know. No, uh, yeah. Something, that, uh, right, like a mechanical system from Rainbird. Seems like that was work. Way more better. reliable yeah. than something that's network connected. They, they, they just, they work. They, they've got years and years of proven experience. Whereas, as you said, why is it, does it, does it always seem like we're just, just a year away for from ten great years. home automation? It seemed that way for 10 years. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little sad. Here's one from Justin. I recently got started working at a large company that has me doing a lot of HDD to SSD swaps. I'm gathering mm -hmm. he's in the IT department. They want to do fresh installs of Windows 7 or Windows 10 in each machine rather than cloning the drives over to the new solid state. I think that's probably a good idea. Start fresh, you're putting a new drive in, let's build it over. Is it possible to create an image or bootable install file that can be configured for our needs? It would be great if I could include the Microsoft updates along with a Java install Firefox, antivirus, other small applications every workstation needs. We have a total of three different model numbers of Dell workstations, including drivers from Dell, would be a bonus. This is the problem almost every IT department has faced and solved years ago. That's why Norton Ghost became so popular. Yes, you take your particular machine, you said there's three different kinds, so you'd have three different builds. You get that one machine looking exactly the way you want it. You create an image with it. Now, Norton Ghost is gone, but there are lots of other choices. Ease US. Uh, we a, love a Cronus, a Cronus True, True image. image. That's a commercial product, but you're in a commercial environment. That'd be a good choice. Uh, and you make an image, and then you can, because it's the same hardware, as long as it's exactly the same hardware, just blast it on. In fact, you could, of course, sneaker net it to each machine, go sit down. A lot of people do this over the network now. They do network installs using PXE and other things. You plug in the new machine. The machine says, ah, I'm awake. It goes off to the, the server, gets the image that's appropriate, installs it. This is something every IT department does, right? Yes, yes. And actually, when I was still actively running IT, I used to work with a company called Altiris. And I know the product has morphed since then. But it, what, it, what it used to allow me to do would, would be to make an image of any workstation at any time without ever leaving my office. Right. And then I could push it back in case that, that computer ever got corrupted. That's a great way to back up. It, it's, a, it's a absolutely great way. But I mean, this sounds like it's a smaller installation, so you probably do want to make individual, safe, perfect image. Get it exactly the way you want it, all the right settings, all the right software, all the right bookmarks in the browser. In other words, get it exactly perfect. Then make your safe copy, and that's what you dump onto every machine. I will say this, this is far, far easier if you're still using Windows 7. Windows 7 is, is ki kind of tolerant from jumping from box to box to box. If you're using 8, especially if you've got UEFI enabled, or 10, uh, even though you've got two machines that are the same model, sometimes you can run into issues. I, I found that with some Dells. So you'd need, would you need a, you'd want a Windows site license. You'd want a business license as right. opposed to an individual license per each copy. Yeah, otherwise it's gonna notice, wait a minute, it looks like That's, the same setup, but not, I've jumped to a yeah. different processor, what's yeah. going on here? And Reverend Dan and Emily says, boy, that's news to me. Norton Ghost is gone. We still have 600 copies. <laughs> um, I don't think they make it anymore. It's certainly not the I choice. I still use it. Yeah, I, I haven't doesn't. bought a Norton Ghost probably for about <laughs> That's, that's years. the problem. It's your fault. <laughs> uh, there are probably better solutions out yeah. there. They're more flexible and, uh, and so forth. Yeah, licensing, DRM, all of that stuff's going to get in the way. And that's pain. really a shame. It really is. But that's why you have to go to Microsoft and you buy those products. What, uh, what do we, is it? we have some, some high, highfalutin uh, license that we use. Oh, here at, at oh, that's yeah. right, yeah, at the Brick House. Actually, I, I use... I remember, is it, too, what is it called? I can't remember what it's called. Uh, I had the Action Pack. I don't know what they renamed it to, but yeah. I, I have like 30 licenses at any time right. every piece of Microsoft right. software. But I have to pay uh, 300 some dollars a year for that. If you can't do the ghost images, which is the best way to do it, and it's funny, Norton Ghost has become the Kleenex a, uh, you know, it's a brand name now uh, th that became a, a generic name. If you can't ghost it, um, there are slipstream solutions. Yes. Somebody mentioned Nine Night yes. that will allow you to do the install on the individual machine and then run an application that will install your batch of programs that you want. In one application, you could walk away and install. The exactly. Yeah, bootstrap the, the original install right. image so that you don't have to do the four days of Windows updates to get it up. Right. Uh, up and running. Yeah, and you there, can do that. There is a free version of a Ghost called Clonezilla. Yes. But it's Linux based. I do not like that software it's, at it's all. It's finicky. I don't like yeah. it. Buy TrueImage. Yeah. Go out and buy a license to TrueImage. Or, you know, buy yourself a decent commercial packed SSD. It will include a license for TrueImage. There you go. There you That's go. And you get an SSD for free. Yeah. And, and maybe you'll get that angel in the TrueImage cloud. <laughs> 
why and, do, and a why couple do, of tablets. Why do phone. tech sites do that? It's uh, you know, that, she has nothing to do with the product. That's a stock image. Um, I, I have to get into that stock image scam. I just want to get my, my face <laughs> like on boxes of Kleenex and computer ads. Let's do that. <laughs> hey. I want to be the Zoolander of tech. <laughs> Blue Steel, baby. Thank you, Father Robert Ballas there. He is the host of so many shows on this network, This Week at Enterprise Tech, uh, Know How. Which we do twice a week now. Now twice yes. weekly. Yes, yes. That's a good idea. It, it is, it's fun because uh, we, we've changed the focus. Thursday is the build heavy. So if you are one of these people who loves smoke and solder, you want to put together components, that's your show Thursday. Monday is for people who they want to buy something and learn how to set it up. Right. So it, it, we've kind of divided the focus and I think it's working out well. We also call him the digital Jesuit because yes, he, he's not in costume. He is a, uh, a member of the Society of Jesus, a Jesuit priest, and, and continues to work in that role Indeed. when you do stuff for us, which is pretty nice. I think it's great that you could do both. Uh, great to have you. It's thank a you, hybrid Robert. solution. <laughs> no, they've just ghosted him. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you all for being here. We do the new screensavers every Saturday afternoon right after the radio show, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2300 UTC. If you want to watch live, be in the chat room. Normally, we watch the chat room only during Game of Geeks. Are we not allowed to see what's going on? Uh, but if you can't be here live, don't worry. On-demand audio and video of every show we do is available on our website. In this case, twit.tv slash NSS for new screen savers. But you can also subscribe. There's so many podcast applications out there now, uh, including Apple TV's Put Back, the podcast app. Uh, although we have five, count them, five different apps you can watch Twit on on the Apple TV. There's one for Roku. Windows Phone, Android, iOS, everywhere you want to be. I thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next week on the new screensavers. Bye-bye. Woo!